So welcome back everybody, my name's Andrew and you're watching The Killer's Country Life. And on today's episode, I'm gonna do something that y'all have requested recently. So I just recently showed off my new master-built Gravity 800 series smoker and several people commented, please do more cooking videos on that specific smoker. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a smoked venison backstrap, but in a way that you may or may not have seen before, but our favorite way to do it. And we're gonna do it on that master-built Gravity. Now with that said, this meal will work on any smoker there is. So we're at our outdoor kitchen. Excuse the wind and noise. Hey, that's where you smoke outside, right? We just got done building this kitchen, so we want to use it. So for starters, I'm going to cut up a small onion and a bell pepper. So give me just a minute to dice those up. No sense in boring that with you. And then we're going to put it in a pot where we're going to cook this down and make our stuffing for our backstrap. All right, so I'm going to get the stove lit up. And if you look in this pot, I just have some diced up onion and bell pepper. We're gonna add a few things to this, and I like to use a smaller pot like this for a reason. I'll show you in just a second. So to this pot, I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil. I have one that's infused with a bunch of herbs. It's actually, we use this for dipping bread in. So good, but you can use regular olive oil. Okay, so we're just gonna give this a quick stir in that olive oil, and we're gonna let this cook down for a little bit until we see that the peppers and onions become translucent. Then we're gonna add a couple of other ingredients. All right, for starters, we're just going to use some diced jalapenos out of the jar. I don't try to make complicated meals here. We have to go get too many fresh ingredients, especially as far away as we live. Probably put, I'd say, about two tablespoons in there. This stuff can get quite spicy. Now, fresh garlic is always best, but minced garlic straight out of the jar works very well for us. We love garlic, so I'm going to go quite heavy on it. Probably put a couple of tablespoons in there. You can never have too much garlic in this house. All right, so I'm gonna start mixing all of this in. And as soon as I start seeing the garlic change, just a little bit of color become very fragrant, uh, we're gonna drop in a block of cream cheese. And you just don't wanna carry garlic too far. You can burn that so easy. So be careful and watch that. All right, lastly, this is why I do it in a pot such as this. I'm gonna put one whole block of cream cheese in, depending on how much meat you have to stuff. You may need to double everything that you're seeing me do here. So I'm just gonna keep running this over a low heat until that cream cheese melts down and I can get all of this mixed together. Then kill the heat and I'm gonna set this to the side. You can go stick it in a freezer or a refrigerator. We actually want this to harden up some, but we're not looking for it to get super cold or frozen because that'll actually stall the cooking process. We don't see stuff this in the meat. We just wanna get it back to at least a room temperature where it's solid enough that it's not runny and we can pack it in the meat. All right, so I'm gonna zoom on in just to the food preparation because let's face it, that's what you're here for and that's what you wanna see. So what I have here is a venison backstrap. This is a smaller one and the whole backstrap, well, it's quite a bit longer. This is about a third of a section of a backstrap. This is the way that we like to pull them out of the deer. So what I'll do is I'll actually take a fillet knife, fish fillet knife and cut into this backstrap and butterfly it. Now the key is do not cut all the way through. I wanna get very close to this edge over here, but don't go all the way through. We're just creating a pocket on the inside. You can flip it open and do a little more cutting, but create as deep of a pocket as you can without going through. Otherwise this mixture will come out in the grill. Now here's where we take this cream cheese pepper, onion, and garlic mixture that we just made and actually spoon it right in. Trust me on this, the flavor is amazing. Now don't overpack it. That's probably about as full as I need to go on this larger piece. Otherwise it just oozes out everywhere in your grill. All right, so next we'll take some bacon. I think you can see where we're going here. Get this underneath our meat right here. We'll get this nice and folded up and closed. Tell you what, we'll go ahead and lay the bacon out first. Get this back strap closed up and stuffed. Then we'll hit it with probably one of the best steak seasonings there is to us, Montreal steak seasoning. We love this and it goes perfect on a meal just like this. So we'll go ahead and put a nice thick coating of that on the inside over the meat and on the bacon itself. Now we'll just wrap this over. Now 
and we'll stake it with a couple of toothpicks. Now you can put bacon on the end if you'd like. I'm fine with it just like this. All right, so here is my Masterbuilt Gravity Series smoker. Won't talk too much about it since I've already did a review on it, but essentially it's a charcoal and wood filled hopper right here that gravity feeds down. So we're going to uh, get a charcoal and applewood smoky flavor today. So that's what I'm smoking with is applewood and charcoal. So I'm getting a little fire starter lit. As soon as the coals on the bottom here have picked up, we'll kick the fan on this. It works much like a pellet smoker and we'll blast this chamber with some of that awesome smelling smoke. Put our food on. Okay, I've got my smoker up to 225 degrees. Here's what we're working with. Two stuffed back straps. I actually pulled out a package of meat that was labeled wrong. This is deer cube steak or venison cube steak. So I went ahead and stuffed it as well, wrapped it in bacon. So I'll put these on the top shelf since they'll cook a whole lot quicker than these stuffed back straps right here. All right, so I have the smaller pieces on the top shelf, back straps on the middle shelf. And because this bacon will render out so much fat, I'm gonna go grab an aluminum pan and put underneath here. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to let these smoke for an hour or two at 225 just to get some of that smoky flavor in them. You can grill these or you can smoke them. We've typically grilled them in the past, no problem. Now, here's the thing about the venison itself. You want to pull it off early. I'm talking 125, 130 degrees. You want to pull it off rare. Overcooked venison is extremely tough. So what I'll do is let these run up to about 100 degrees, 105 and then I'll pull them off, run the grill itself up to about 500 degrees to get a good sear and crisp that bacon up. It's the beauty of this grill. You can do that in a couple of minutes and uh, then sear them. Pull them off once they're around that 125 to 130 degree mark, let them rest. The temperature will continue to rise at that point and then serve. But you definitely don't wanna pull off with mushy bacon. So smoke at 225, run the temp up, crisp that bacon and pull it off while it's still rare. All right, so let me show you all these. It has been right at an hour smoking at 225. The exposed meat is definitely getting done. Venison cooks quickly. So what I'm gonna do, these are around 105 to 110, the back straps, that's what I'm most focused on. So I'm gonna pull all these off, put them in the pan right here, bump the grill up to say 400. We just wanna get the grate nice and hot. You can do 400, 500, doesn't really matter. We're trying to really quickly sear and crisp up the bacon. So we're just gonna toss and turn them real quick. And that should drive the temperature on up in the meat to the point that it's medium rare as far as venison goes. We'll pull these off. All right, so here's the crazy part. That probably took one minute to get to 400. I just love that about this grill. It's so quick. So you can hear the bacon crisping on those hot grates. I let it sit at 400 for just a few minutes before I decide to put these back on so we can get those grates nice and hot. Now when cooking bacon like this straight on those grates, I do expect it to potentially flame up on me, but I've got something coming very soon to help eliminate that problem. Can't wait to show you all that. All right. Let's go ahead and flip these over. It's been just a couple minutes. See how this bacon's looking. It's starting to crisp up. Awesome. This is the point where I expect to lose a little cheese too. All this flipping around. That's part of it. Back straps, I'll kind of flip them all the way around. All right, as far as these chunks go, oh, that's looking so good. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these. Oh no, all that cheese is gonna ignite. Ooh, look at those right there. That looks so good. You go a little longer if you want your bacon even crispier, but as hot as that grill is, I can assure you that bacon is done. All right, so here we are, just pulled it off the grill. We had reached around 125 and it was, it was quickly going up to the 130s. We're probably well above that at this point. Now, after searing off that bacon, my goodness, the smell is so good. All right, so take a look at that. The bacon crisped up and actually flamed up just a little. No issues at all. I love crispy bacon. Let's cut into this, see what it looks like. 
All right, I'm just gonna cut right down the middle. Okay, y'all take a look at that. Absolutely perfect. Rare to medium rare venison. Temperature was good, checked with a good meat thermometer. Look at that. All that goodness, the flavor, the smoke, the stuffing. Oh, that is perfect. That is how you cook venison right there, my friends. You cannot overcook it, not venison. Okay, so now the taste test. Get this toothpick out of here. Oh my goodness, this looks so good. It smells so good. I, I can't explain the smell. Let me get some of this uh, cheese and peppers and everything else on it. That may be my favorite thing that I've smoked on this grill yet. And I made some killer, and I mean killer ribs, probably the best ribs I've ever made in my life the other night on it. The flavors of the peppers, the garlic, the cheese, and cooking to rare now, that's the key. That's, that venison is so tender. The bacon just, I can't explain all the flavors. They're so good, the saltiness of it. Oh, I gotta get another bite. This is one of my favorite meals. And that applewood smoke that one of our viewers and a friend of mine has recommended I keep trying, such a sweet, awesome flavor. <laughs> that is so good. Trust me, guys, if you have a loved one, or ladies, if you hunt and you have a loved one, there's a lot of people out there that aren't crazy about venison. And usually that's because it wasn't prepared properly from harvest, bleeding out properly, getting a lot of that iron and gamey flavor out in the blood. And the most important thing where most people mess up with venison, without a doubt, is they overcook it. Trust me, if your partner can get past seeing what appears to be blood, it's not blood by the way, and can eat a rare venison uh, loin, anything like this, I promise you, you'll make them a believer. There's no gamey flavor, there's no blood, there's no nothing. You would think you're eating beef right here and it is, oh my goodness, it's so good. Hands down. One of my favorite meals right here. Probably the best it's ever been smoking it like that. So I'm gonna shut up. Please take my word for it, try this. Don't overcook it. That's the number one key I can give you. Put whatever else you want or in it, you know, on top in it, doesn't matter. I can't wait for Tiffany to try this. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this. A lot more cooking videos coming. I have some pretty cool stuff in mind that we're gonna try. Hopefully you enjoyed a nice venison recipe. Catch y'all in the next video. Oh, whoa.